Hey everyone, this video is going to be an introduction to moles, or nevi as they're also called. Uh, the singular there being mole or nevis, those are the same things. Um, moles, as uh, you know, most of us know them as little brown or darkly colored spots on our skin. Moles are these benign uh, collections of melanocytes. Melanocytes being the, uh, the cells in our skin that produce melanin, which is the main pigment, the color of our skin. So if there's a you know, a collection of those cells that produce the pigment, well, that's why they're darker. Um, all skin colors of people have them. There's something that occur in, you know, everybody. Um, you can get them at birth, you see you born with them, or you can acquire them throughout your lifetime. This can be an introduction to them, and more important, this is gonna be a way to uh, help you determine whether or not you have melanoma, which is something that, you know, seems like everyone's heard about and everyone thinks it's a pretty bad thing. Um, this can be an introduction to all those, all those different topics. So first of all, if you hear someone say mole, um, that's kind of like the layman's term. Nevis is kind of like the dermatologist or uh, the provider's uh, term. Um, like I said, these can be caused um, congenitally, so by your genes. Simply they can mean your genes, you're gonna have moles, or um, through acquired ways. Now the two big acquired ways are through UV light, which we commonly encounter through sunlight, and hormones. Um, for example, the big ones there are pregnancy um, or other conditions like diabetes, that sort of thing. Um, so if you you know have a lot of exposure to sunlight, that's why people say that sunlight can lead to moles because that UV light can cause these benign collections of melanocytes. Um, hormones can do the same thing. Uh, the big thing with moles though is that usually if you're gonna acquire moles, you usually acquire them by age like 30 or 40. You don't usually acquire more throughout your life. We don't really know why that is, but if you are already 30 or 40 years old, then you probably have all the moles that you're gonna get, and they might even fade as you continue to go. Um, some uh, myths about moles I'd like to clear up before we get to the nitty gritty um, is it doesn't matter, like, uh, you know, if you have a mole that really sticks out of your skin, so this is your skin, your mole sticks out like this, as opposed to just being flat on the surface, that's not an indicator of being, um, uh, you know, melanoma or melanotic, that's, that's, uh, a lot of people think that, you know, that as it grows out, that's actually a, a different kind of mole called a compound mole, so this one on the left here is called compound, and this one's called junctional. You don't really need to know those things, but though that's just as benign, they're just as benign as each other. There's no real indication that one uh, leads more commonly to mel melanoma than the other one does. And another myth is about the blue nevus. So some people have blue moles and they think that that's a bad sign or they think one mole is changing blue or changing from blue uh, to brown or that sort of thing. That's not necessarily a bad sign. That's a particular kind of nevus. Um, that just kind of usually means it's deeper in the skin is what that, if you have a blue mole. So kind of a cool anomaly there. Um, but so now on to the real reason you're here. A simple way to determine if you know the mole or the lesion on your skin is melanoma right and it's as easy as a b c b e we love mnemonics here at med school made easy so the first one a asymmetry um so when you look at that mole is it a perfect oval or is it you know a half oval half huge square right because this one here is symmetrical, this one on the bottom clearly is not. Um, the more asymmetry present, the higher chance that um, that mole is, uh, you know, it's not benign, it's a, it's a form of melanoma. Um, kind of going along with asymmetry, the second part of the mnemonic here, B, is for border. So that's kind of the same thing. Does it have a smooth, even border? Or does it have this like jagged, spiculated, weird border? So uh, the lower option here, is more indicative of, uh, you know, a skin cancer or melanoma. Um, the third part here, the C, is for color. Now, when you have a mole, it doesn't matter what color it is. Like we said, it doesn't matter if it's blue, it doesn't matter if it's black, it doesn't matter if it's brown, light brown, dark brown, but you want it to be a similar color throughout, right? So you want it to look like something like this, where it all looks pretty evenly distributed. You don't want to have, you know, a jagged, asymmetrical, uh, mole where over here it's really dark and like over here it's kind of light and in the middle it's tan and it's blue and uh, no you don't want to have that so the the bottom option here would be more like melanoma um, the fourth part here the D is for diameter 
and um, there's kind of some thought here that bigger moles lead to melanoma. Not necessarily true, especially with congenital moles, um, but really like a positive, a positive indicator in this D category would be a mole that has a diameter greater than six millimeters, which is a little, you know, a little larger than half a centimeter. Um, especially if it's growing in size. So if it started at three millimeters and now it's, you know, eight millimeters, that's more of an indicator. Um, but this, this D for damage doesn't necessarily mean that all big moles are melanoma. It just means, you know, watch its size. The larger ones, especially if they're growing in size, may end up being more likely to, you know, develop into uh, melanoma, which leads us to the fifth uh, part of this mnemonic, the E, which is for evolution. And evolution means change over time. And that's really, you know, one of the biggest indicators. If you have this beautiful little mole that you were born with, it's even in color, it's small, it's two millimeters, great borders, very symmetrical, great color, small, and over time it is just turning into, you know, more and more of this beast that is huge and spiculated and abnormal coloring and all that stuff. That's evolution, it's changing over time. And if you have evolution, that's a very, very, very strong indicator that you should get that mole checked out. Um, this is why sometimes if you go to a dermatologist or a provider, uh, they will take pictures like of your back or take pictures of your arm or take pictures of a particular mole because when you come back in three, six, 12 months, they'll then take another picture and they'll be able to compare the two. That way it's not you know subjective whether or not you think it's evolving, they'll be able to show you with pictures that it's changing or that it's not changing. Um, so this is kind of an at home. Um, this is what your, you know, family practice provider is going to use. They're going to look at through this mnemonic and decide whether or not to refer you to a dermatologist or whether or not they're going to do a biopsy. Uh, so this is kind of a, you know, a, a rough edge diagnosis. True diagnoses. So like if you went to a, um, a dermatologist or you had a biopsy taken in an office, true diagnosis is done with either a dermatoscope which is this um, light device that can really see into different skin lesions and, and you can you know, watch for evolution using this dermatoscope. Or really, you know, the true, the gold standard for diagnosis is you take a biopsy, whether that's a punch biopsy or whatever, you cut it off, you send it to a pathologist, they'll chop it up, look at it under a microscope and tell you whether there's any dysplasia or any cancerous changes, and then they'll give you a report whether or not it's um, you know, cancerous. Uh, treatment, there's all sorts of treatment for melanoma. Um, hopefully you can catch it in a, in a you know, early stage and just chop it all off um, if you do have it. Uh, but if you do have it, you know, there's a very small chance of mortality. It's like 2% chance of mortality overall, 91% five-year survival rate, which is really good. Um, that being said, it is the most deadly skin cancer, so it's especially something to look after. And that's, that's the reason why people say, you know, make sure you wear sunscreen. Um, but yeah. Uh, that's you know, an introduction to moles and whether or not the mole that you have is melanotic or uh, you know, is, is melanoma. Thanks.